morning. Nice to see your lovely faces. Um, I always forget that I don't actually introduce myself <clears throat> in these meetings, but my name is Mary Amanda and I'm the manager of uh, grants and community engagement with Arts Build. If you're new to us, um, welcome to our Arts Builds Friday community Zoom. Um, we have a, as usual, a wonderful lineup of guests this morning, um, but before we get started, I do want to um, share a few announcements with you all um, that are kind of focused um, with some of the things that we're doing here at Arts Build. Um, firstly, I'd like to start off by reminding everyone that we are currently in our last and final round of the Artists Work Grant Program um, that began at the end of last year. Um, I've recently gone in and updated the grant guidelines uh, to reflect uh, the remaining grant fund guidelines um, that uh, have changed based on the maximum uh, funding request for each of the two categories um, as we've gone through the past previous rounds. So if you are planning on applying for that, I encourage you to look at the updated guidelines um, and please contact me if you have any questions um, before the next and final review round, which will be um, next month on May 14th. Uh, we'll also be announcing uh, the awardees from this last round, um, hopefully by next week. Um, I'd also uh, like to announce that the Arts Build Communities Grants Program through the Tennessee Arts Commission um, has recently opened up to applications for this year. Um, and so uh, Arts Build, along with uh, Southeast Tennessee Development District, um, who also is a uh, designated agency for this grant program, will be um, hosting a um, information session about the grant program. And I'm going to plug um, uh, the link to the website that has information about the grant program here in the chat box. So feel free to join us <clears throat> um, on Tuesday, April 27th at 3 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, we do have that information in our weekly arts wire, as well as it's made available on Facebook as an event. But I'm also going to plug in the Zoom RSVP in the chat box as well. So please be sure to register for that. And if you happen to not be able to make it, of course, uh, we always record um, our meetings and you can find out more information about that grant program uh, once it's posted on our YouTube page. Lastly, um, I would like to remind um, and ask everyone to um, take uh, uh, to take some time to fill out the Americans for the Arts COVID-19 impact survey. Um, and whether you are an individual artist uh, or organization, um, there's two different surveys for each category. Um, and this information is really important uh, to us and helps us uh, collect and utilize this data um, and look at the impact of the pandemic on our local community. And the Tennessee Arts Commission, or sorry, the Americans for the Arts um, will only release that data once we kind of reach a threshold. Um, so I'm going to also plug that in to um, the chat box and I'm going to do two, two different um, links. So the first one is a survey that's specifically for artists. So if you are an individual artist, please take some time to go on the website and fill this survey out and also help spread the word um, so we can get this really important information um, and help use it um, as part of our recovery efforts in, in, our, in our community. Uh, and then this one that I just plugged in is the survey for arts organizations. Um, so please um, take some time to, to fill that information out for us. Um, and once the report is uh, complete and we have enough data, we will be sharing that with the arts community. Um, so you all can get a better sense of <clears throat> excuse me, um, the, the impact and also just, you know, help planning ahead for as we continue in uh, the recovery process. All right, so those are um, kind of some um, general announcements that I wanted to share. Um, now I'd like to uh, start welcoming our uh, guests for today. 
And up first, I'd like to invite uh, Jonathan Sussman, who's the special events, <clears throat> special events manager with the city of Chattanooga's Open Spacious Division. Uh, and he's here uh, to share some updates um, about planning um, events in, um, in the city's um, public open spaces. So Jonathan, um, welcome and thank you for joining us today. And please feel free to um, introduce yourself and whenever you're ready, share your screen. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me and thank you all for being here. Um, yes, my name is Jonathan Sussman. I work for the city of Chattanooga as the special events manager. My role is to kind of manage our uh, larger scale events that take place in our public spaces, as well as our more signature parks like Miller Park, um, Ross's Landing, Coolidge Park, etc. cetera. Um, I started with the city in July of 2016. So it'll be five years uh, this July. Um, I have, uh, before that I was an event producer. Um, on my own with my own company, working for uh, other other companies like Chattanooga Presents. Um, I've been a musician for 33 years now, yikes. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've basically been in and around every aspect of uh, special events for, for decades now. And um, I moved back to Chattanooga from Nashville 10 years ago. And um, I really haven't looked back and haven't stopped. It's been a incredible opportunity in this position, especially to be able to really kind of affect change and to really open up our spaces to more people in the community. Um, so that's kind of me and, and, and what I do. And um, I'm sure a lot of, I, I know a lot of people that are in these little Brady Bunch windows here, um, but for those of you I don't know, uh, nice to meet you. Um, so the big question that everybody asks me all the time is, you know, where are we as far as opening up events? And um, I joked last year that my favorite emoji was the little shrugging person, you know, like, I don't know. Uh, in fact, many of the people on this call, I've had to say, I don't know or no to um, several times over the past uh, 12 to 14 months. And, um, you know, it's been obviously extremely difficult. The special events industry, the live music industry, the performance industry in general um, has just taken an enormous hit. And it's been it's been very hard to um, to kind of maneuver that, uh, to be honest with you. And it's not just a Chattanooga problem. Um, I sit on a municipal special events association, which is groups of uh, special events offices from cities all over the country. And everybody from small town to giant metro metropolitan cities are, are dealing with this the same issues. So, um, you know, kind of our current state right now, as you all know, we have a new administration coming in. Um, they will be sworn in on Monday, and um, I have to kind of give the shrugging emoji, emoji there uh, on, on what, you know, is going to be next with that. Um, I think a lot of people with the city are kind of giving that shrugging emoji right now as to what's going to happen next. But, um, you know, our, our COVID numbers that we have been looking at um, specifically come from the Harvard Institute of Health, and the number that we were looking at uh, the closest was the uh, number of cases per 100,000 residents over a seven day average. Um, that is what puts us in the blue, yellow, orange, and, and red. Um, we lived in red for a very long time and we have gone back down to uh, orange. In fact, we were really on the cusp of getting back into that yellow um, area. And unfortunately we have seen numbers tick up over the past week or so. Um, what that means for events uh, under this administration, I, I, I truly don't have a full answer, but I do right, know that right now we are opening up events uh, to 50 or fewer people for smaller spaces, um, larger spaces that can accommodate. Um, we are allowing up to 250 people. But again, I, I have to reiterate that's under the current administration and we do have a new administration coming in uh, that that may alter those numbers or they may stick with what we are right now. Um, we are working with several events though right now that are coming online. Um, in fact, we have a bike ride that's going to happen on uh, May 1st. And I see you nodding your head, Paula, um, on, on May 1st that will start at the Bessie Smith Cultural Center. We've worked closely with this group out of uh, South Carolina and they gave us a very good detailed COVID protocol plan as to how they run their events. And in fact, they ran this event uh, in October 
in Greenville and had even more participants than are being planned for here. Um, and there were no, you know, traced uh, infections from that. There were no, you know, super spreader event from that, from that event that they had in South Carolina. And it was very, very well run. Um, and so that's going to be kind of, well, I say it's going to be the first, it's going to be the first large scale athletic event. Of course, um, all the arts groups on this call, I'm sure understand that the Four Bridges Arts Festival is also happening this weekend. Um, and that is also another uh, large event that we've had some permitting for as far as the uh, road closure for the event. And so we're really just kind of easing back into special events and trying to take it as a, on a case by case basis. Uh, each event operates differently and um, you know, there's a lot of conversations going back and forth with people that want to host, you know, events for thousands of people and people that want to host, you know, baby showers for 50 people. But each one of them is important and each one of them we need to make sure that they're following the correct protocols as needed. Um, so, yeah, so I mean, I know, you know, I wish I had this great big answer that was like, here's what we're going to do and here's how everybody needs to do what they, you know, what they want to do. Um, but we're just not there yet. Now, for anyone that is interested in hosting an event, um, I'll put my contact information in the chat. Um, please feel free to reach out with me uh, regarding any questions. And um, I should also note that the city's um, restrictions on events really are uh, solely for public spaces. So city owned spaces that would include the streets uh, as well as city parks like Miller Park, like the Chattanooga Green and other smaller community parks throughout the city. Um, and doesn't really affect uh, events on county or private property. Um, but I'm also happy to help you with your event on county or private property if you do have questions about those. Um, I believe I've helped a few folks on this call that have had some events in their, in their spaces and um, I'm happy to do that. It's, it's, it's great to be able to talk about events again. Um, so during this kind of pause of events beyond, you know, telling people no and I don't know a lot, one of the um, one of the initiatives I've been working on, and this is something that, uh, again, people on this call and I have had conversations about for years now, um, is creating a sort of one-stop shop for special events within the city of Chattanooga. As it currently stands, uh, and for those who have put together events, you understand this, you will call one department and if you, you know, are lucky enough to get the right person within that department, they can walk you through the process for their focus, right? So if it's closing roads, they can help you with the closing roads, uh, if it's renting a park or if it's getting a beer permit. But what that ends up causing is, is it causes event organizers to go kind of play this guessing game of I hope I get the right person and I hope they have the right information for me. And so, um, excuse me, I would like to consolidate uh, this entire process into a singular application that brings the other departments in as needed. So when you say you're going to close a road, then CDOT becomes aware. If you say you need to have a beer at your event, then the beer board becomes aware and they can help you uh, either proactively reach out to you to, uh, to get what you need done or we also provide all the contact information in one place as well. Um, I've had a couple people go through this process uh, over the last week in kind of a testing phase um, and it should be rolling out very soon. Um, we have had some back-end issues when it comes to moving to a new URL, blah, 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 but it should be ready soon. Um, I am going to share my screen though and kind of walk through uh, that process really quickly. Um, there's a lot of information in this application, so please forgive me if I just kind of speed through it. Um, once the event um, application goes uh, live online, you'll be able to find it on the uh, chattanooga.gov website. And um, I'll get everybody that I can that URL uh, when it's ready. But I'm going to go ahead and share the screen and show you kind of what it looks like. Okay, let's start from the beginning. So this is the, the the first page is a lot of information. Um, welcome, you know, all that fun stuff. We appreciate you hosting your event. Um, deadlines that say, you know, it's got to be at least 90 days or could be up to a calendar year. Um, this is something 
that we typically had not asked for uh, from event producers in the past, and those are site maps. Um, site maps, you know, will vary. I know in the, uh, the the quality and by event and all that, but we. Um, Wants you to start thinking this application isn't just to get your information. This application is to also inform people, uh, especially, you know, first time event producers. It informs them of the process and the things just to be thinking about. Um, all of these things that are listed on this sitemap also directly are reflected on event budgets. And so I think it's really important for event organizers to understand the things that they might encounter or should be um, aware of when, when organizing their events because you you are a good event producer should be living and dying by their budget and uh if you have that set up from the beginning hopefully there won't be any surprises um accessible events this is something that i'm uh very focused on is creating a more equitable experience for everyone when it comes to events um and i've been working with different groups of uh, individuals to kind of help flesh this out and we'll be doing more with this uh, accessible events initiatives as we move forward. Uh, annual events that typically come in within the city. Um, this is just kind of giving them, you know, kind of a first right of refusal, so to speak. Um, expressive activities would be considered First Amendment protected activities such as protests, marches, things like that. We typically, this does not cost anybody anything. Um, we do ask for, you know, some accountability and some information from people hosting these uh, protests. Um, again, this will be a free um, application. There's no cost to this, but this will be a great way to start developing, in my hope, uh, uh, developing a good rapport with the city and with these uh, organizers. So going on, like I said, I'll try to move this really quickly. Uh, here's the basic stuff. Um, Again, just very basic information that we ask for you. Um, if you state that it takes place at a public street or park and serving beer and all these things, that is what triggers the next pages to come through. So then when I say it takes place in public streets, then I'll be uh, sent over to street closures. And that will be, you know, this, you will fill this information out. This is all the information that people typically fill out on a, on a street closure request. Um, Currently, um, the good thing is, is you don't have to write in your name and your address and all that other stuff every time. Um, if, uh, again, if it's taking place at a public park, it will take you to our parks page that will uh, actually link out to our park reservation software that we use. Um, serving beer will give you the information as far as um, the regulatory bureau and what that process is and also links to our new online permitting system for special events. Um, so if you typically serve beer at an event, um, we have an online system that uh, was just started a few weeks ago that should make that process a lot easier. I, if you have had beer at an event, you know that you typically have to go pick up an application, go, go fill out the 20-something page application, get it uh, notarized and, and have five references and all this stuff. Um, you still have to do a lot of that process, but this puts it all online and you're able to um, kind of work through that process through the online system. Um, again, all this stuff is very kind of straightforward there. Um, each each thing you click brings you up into a it brings you to a new page. Um, it probably is not going to let me, yeah, because I haven't filled one of those out. But you all kind of get the idea of of, of what's going on. I I hope with that. But the idea is that it's one application that you fill out um, instead of having to go to you know five or six various departments just to make something happen. Um, yeah, so that is, um, what I do and what I've been working on. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited to see more and more activity happen and more and more questions come my way. We are absolutely, um, inundated with requests right now. Uh, so if you do, um, if you do have uh, an email into me or a question into me right now, I promise I'm not ignoring you. Um, we just are, extremely uh, busy with requests and just little general questions about how they how people can host their events. Um, so uh, I appreciate Artsfield for having me. I hope I covered everything that you wanted me to on this. And um, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, Jonathan. Um, we have a comment uh, that from Stratton who said, um, the online form is such an improvement 
Um, thanks for sharing that. And if anyone has specific questions that they want to ask Jonathan, please feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Um, well, I guess that uh, for, for us, we're kind of a little bit of a different um, creature at Sculpture Fields because we are a city park, but also we manage it. So I was curious if um, how that might, how we might be tied into the system because sometimes people ask us about events and we're not sure, well, I'm not sure necessarily what part needs to go just through us and how much needs to go through like the city process. I know this is kind of a niche question. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, so Sculpture Fields uh, is, it's kind of a different animal as is the Bessie Smith Cultural Center. Um, and Paula, I think you can relate on that one. Uh, it's, it's, it's a different animal and, and both of you kind of have different management um, uh, layouts, right? And so um, as it pertains to Sculpture Fields specifically, if you are gonna be serving any kind of alcohol, of course, that's when you know, we would need to be involved on the city side. Um, that would also require you know, the presence of a CPD officer. Um, when you're closing roads, any roads around that. Uh, as far as smaller activities that happen within the Sculpture Fields, um, you know, I, the city does maintain a lot of the space too, if I understand correctly, uh, based on the agreement. So um, yeah, I know you sent me an email this morning as well. And, and I, I don't really have a great answer for how you all will operate. Now, if it's talking about an event that's gonna be larger than 50 people, I, I would recommend and, 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 and think it would be in everybody's benefit to contact myself and um, any other, you know, impacted, departments um, or have me contact those impacted departments um, to just make sure that um, there's nothing that we're missing or you all are missing before before you all you know host this event um, and that you you know if you do have COVID protocols that you have set in place um, you know by now I think we all kind of understand the basics of like hand sanitizing stations and keeping away from folks and wearing, you know, social distancing and, and wearing masks and things like that. Um, but like I said, from the top of this, I mean, every event is different and will have its own kind of COVID protocols. So, you know, runs, for instance, we're talking to certain runs about leaving in different heats and, um, and uh, I'm looking at some smiling faces right now. They're making me smile. Sorry, y'all. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it is a different animal, Anne, honestly, and I'm happy to kind of talk offline a little more about, you know, any specific questions about, uh, or any questions about specific events that you, you know, are looking to host out there. Um, but um, yeah, that's kind of a blurred, blurred space right there, right, with, with being city owned and privately managed. Um, space, I mean, being city owned, I think it would still fall under the same regulations we we currently have, honestly, um, of the 50 and, 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 and obviously sculpture fields is, is, is massive. So you could hold 250 people there, uh, quite, quite easily. Does that help? Yes. Thanks. And I probably will be harassing you in the next week. Oh, you all harass me all the time. And I love it. Yeah. That's, great. That's what I do. I love it. And it's not harassing me at all, by the way. I love it. Well, Thanks so much. Um, just because we have a kind of a, a broad lineup of folks, I want to keep things moving. Um, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Jonathan. I did plug his uh, contact email in the chat box. So feel free to grab that and contact him directly with any specific questions. Um, and now I'd like to uh, shift gears and bring on our next um, guest speaker. Uh, I'd like to invite Sarah. Angelo, uh, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. Um, and she is the chief of staff from Resilia, uh, a new company that enables nonprofit organizations uh, to increase their capacity and funders. Uh, and she'll also be you know, talking about her organization, if you can do an introduction uh, to yourself and um, sharing about uh, their new microgrants program. So Sarah, feel free to take the floor. Thank you so much. Um, I, I really appreciate that introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning. I just want to start by introducing myself and thanking Jonathan so much for that um, for that terrific presentation. It's pretty amazing to hear what you've accomplished and what you're, you're rolling out for the community, especially since you joined your new role during such an incredibly challenging time. Uh, so thank you, Miriam, and thank you all for being here this morning. There's so much learning and great conversation that I'm hearing. 
Um, I'm Sarah Angelo. I'm Chief of Staff at Resilia. And I want to tell you a little bit about Resilia and what it is that we're doing. We are a social enterprise and we're creating the first technology for nonprofits that is crafted and designed by leaders from the sector. We like to say that this is technology for us, by us. And what that means is that we're building solutions for the sector that meet nonprofits where there's a need. And then we offer solutions that address those issues at the heart of the sector, especially when it comes to unequal access to resources and capacity. And our micro grant, like Miriam said, as well as our new nonprofit platform is one part of our solution there. Um, Miriam invited me here today to tell you more about that micro grant, like I mentioned, but I'm also hoping to listen and learn from all of you on this call about the arts um, and nonprofit community in Chattanooga. One area that we are focused on supporting at Brasilia is what we call philanthropy deserts. And arts organizations, especially those that are outside major metropolitan areas, those that focus on non-traditional art forms, those that are recently formed, those are still emerging, those groups too frequently live in that area, those philanthropy deserts. And from that comes a struggle for capacity. So before Resilia, I was a chief development officer. I was at a large arts organization in San Francisco. Before that, I spent over a decade in fundraising and arts administration in New York. So I was lucky enough to work with Grammy award-winning artists, some of the nation's most incredible performing artists, but also small ensembles, individual artists, community arts groups, and educational programs. And as a fundraiser, and as a musician, I'm, I'm a classical pianist, um, I saw over and over again the same trends, that organizations with more resources to invest in fundraising, more resources to invest in their own internal capacity, they were constantly able to raise more funds, secure larger grants, build those engaged boards, and really leverage their relationships and connections, even in a major city like New York, with just tremendous philanthropic capital. That struggle for capacity building and investments was constantly present for most nonprofits. Um, so let me pause here for a resonance check. Any thumbs up, reactions, or, or questions that I should pause for? I'm seeing some smiles, I'm seeing some nods. All right, I'm gonna keep going then. Thanks everyone. So these philanthropy deserts, right? They're across the country and they are wherever nonprofits are doing critical work, but without meaningful assistance, without meaningful assistance from philanthropists, from grant makers, or even from government support where that exists for the arts. And these nonprofits tend to lack sophisticated fundraisers, well-connected boards, um, savvy communications and marketing professionals, and these organizations, these are the ones that Resilia is keeping in mind for our micro grants and for our platform and technology resources. And for our growth, we're focused on their growth. So our platform, our nonprofit platform, which is available at no cost, it's part of Resilia's advocacy to support and advocate for groups in this area. And our micro grant, which I'm going to drop the link in the chat here, that's our quarterly initiative to award five grants of $1,000 each to continue this effort. So I'm dropping this link in here. You all should have that. What this means, this micro grant, is it's a new project that we're launching uh, with BlackBod. You know, maybe some of you use Razor's Edge or you use some of the BlackBod technology. We're part of BlackBod's um, social good cohort. And we launched this first micro grant initiative to provide pure programmatic support to the community, to those organizations that are doing great work, often without the meaningful support that they need. Not that we think $1,000 is going to you know, revolutionize anyone's organization, but this is an opportunity to submit a very quick five minute form I promise you can utilize materials you've already crafted. You can probably cut and paste the language for this application right from your website uh, and send us, um, send us this quick form to learn more about your work. And as part of that, you have free access to this platform that I just described, 
a platform that provides some of those capacity building resources where we are taking the brains and experiences and best tips, tools, and practices from nonprofit leaders across the country and turning it into accessible technology. So if you have ever struggled to find a good example of a grant budget, if you have ever struggled to find a great example of an acknowledgement letter of how to correctly notate you know, the uh, tax receipt information for a donor, that's some of the information that we are crafting to provide and have readily available within this platform, all as part of our initiative to make, um, make this work easier and democratize access for, uh, for organizations nationwide. Resilia is headquartered in New Orleans. We are Louisiana based and we have offices in New York and we also have some team members distributed around the country. Um, and as we're distributed around the country, our focus is keeping those small groups in mind. Um, let me take a quick pause here for any questions. I'm looking at the chat here so I can see anything in here. I see Finisa, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, Finisa. Uh, thank you so much for, for the support that you think this is awesome for, for organizations. Yeah, definitely. Cool. One thing that I hope as arts leaders you'll find useful about our technology is the way that it provides a seamless source of truth and seamless data transparency. When I was fundraising, when I was writing grant reports, I remember the night before things were due, I would be looking across my spreadsheets, looking throughout my emails, trying to figure out how many people came to this program, how many new works did we commission last year, where can I find information about the constituents who were part of this after school program. Um, plenty of fundraising that I was doing was so motivated by telling a story and nothing motivates someone more than a story and nothing shows your impact more than data. So what our platform aims to do is bridge that gap, show how quantitative data and qualitative data help you with the capacity to transform your organization to move forward with additional resources that you need. Um, so I had about, about 10 minutes assigned for Miriam and I uh, wanted to take a pause and answer any questions that might be on your mind, whether it's about fundraising, data, technology, anything else. Um, so floor is open. Also drop my email in here in case anyone has any questions I can answer after the fact. I don't see any um, questions popping up in the chat box or if anyone wants to unmute themselves, feel free to. Mark, I see your question. And yes, 501c3 organizations are who we're supposed to support right now for our grant opportunity. Are most of y'all on the call um, 501c3s or do we have some fiscally sponsored folks too? All right, I'm seeing some head nods. We got a mix of both. Yeah, I think we have a, a pretty good mix of, um, and also individual artists as well. Cool. Well, let me share my screen for one second before I give you all back your time. Okay, can you all see this, uh, this slide right here about Resilia? All right, great. Uh, so again, we are nonprofit first technology built by nonprofit leaders to help organizations, especially through this time where we're all building back better and coming back from COVID to do great work and keep producing terrific programs. And this is just a quick overview of that micro grants program I described. We're in partnership with Blackbaud. We're launching this quarterly initiative to award $5,000 micro grants pure support, there's no reporting, nothing complicated, no burdensome restrictions. Uh, even though the deadline for this quarter is the end of, uh, end of tonight, it's a five minute application. I'm, I'm sure some of you might've filled this out even while I'm talking right now. We're gonna revive this program every quarter. 
Um, the best way to learn more about it is to follow Resilia on social media or um, join our email list that you can do on our website, resilia.com. And this is a quick slide about our nonprofit platform, a way to use data to keep your organization on track, invest in your capacity, and use that program data and metrics to strengthen your organization. All right, well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. I really appreciate that. And Shanna, really appreciate also that you'll spread the word to others about our opportunities. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's great to have you and thanks for sharing that information. Um, and we will also share um, your website and this grant program in the follow-up email as well. Terrific. Well, thank you all so much for having me. It sounds like you're doing some really amazing work in Chattanooga and hope to come by and visit as soon as, as, soon as some of these events start happening. Yeah, we hope to see you here soon. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. You too. All right, um, up next, um, I would like to invite uh, Shadrina Booker, uh, who's the Director of Development and Marketing with Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Uh, and she's here to share an upcoming opportunity to participate in a design contest with their organization. Thank you, Miriam. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to, to see all of you. Uh, like Miriam said, my name is Shadrina Booker. Uh, I work for Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Greater Chattanooga. Uh, if you all don't know about us, we are a one-to-one -one mentoring organization. So we pair adults um, with children uh, six to 14 um, years old in um, some mentoring um, capacities. Uh, and so the reason for me being here is um, I came in, I just started in this position in August and um, I've kind of gone on a, a redesign and, and remarketing of um, all the things that I can kind of spruce up for us. Um, and one of the, the biggest things um, that I would love to see an update with um, is our t-shirts. So our t-shirts right now um, is a part of the welcome gift that we give to all of our volunteers, to so all of our bigs, all of our littles, um, even some of the family members of um, the little brothers and sisters um, get t-shirts as well. Um, and right now they are not the most exciting shirts. <laughs> I will uh, share my screen so you all can, can see them and see why we would love um, to have one of you all <laughs> design uh, the new one. Can everybody see this? If you can make it a little bit bigger, like by clicking on it, opening it. Hold on. You would think that I would know how to use Zoom by now, right? Um, it's okay. We all, I struggle through it every day. It's literally. It doesn't want to cooperate with me. Um, so I don't know if you can show it, <laughs> Miriam, um, but pretty much the t-shirt the um, just has our logo um, and it has our website on the back. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, and it is one of the t-shirts is in black and one of the t-shirts is in green. Um, and so we had one of our co, uh, one of my coworkers, uh, Shaughnessy Cargill. Many of you may know him. I know he's, he's huge in, in the art. Um, community, he had an idea to open up a contest um, to local artists um, to be able to engage the community um, in who we are and, and what we do um, and just have a really great design um, that our, uh, all of our bigs and our littles will be proud to wear. And so we have um, some submission guidelines and uh, we don't have a ton of money because we're a nonprofit, but we are offering $250 um, to the artists um, whose design is chosen. Um, and like I said, we would just love for you all to, to submit your designs um, and for us to have a much more exciting <laughs> um, t-shirt for, for our kids and our adults to wear. Are there any questions that I can answer for anyone? Is there, is there a link to that, uh, to the t-shirts, like for that contest? Um, yeah, so I think Miriam is going to share um, everything with everyone on the call, 
um, okay. with, with all of um, the, the deadlines and the, the guidelines that we have. And if anyone has um, any questions, um, feel free to, to reach out to me and we can, we, we've never done this before. So um, we're, we're excited to, to do it and to hopefully continue it. Yeah, I will quickly share my screen just to share. Um, so this is the um, artist call. Um, the deadline is uh, May 7th, as you can see. Um, and I will uh, share this out um, in the follow-up email and we'll also uh, be sure to share it out in ArtsWire as well and uh, through our social media platforms. Well, if um, no one else has any questions um, for Shadrina, um, I want to thank you so much for joining us and for presenting this uh, lovely opportunity uh, to engage our local arts community um, and our artists. And I hope that you guys get a lot, uh, lots of great um, proposals for your new t-shirt designs. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to come back if you have any other um, you know, ways that you guys are revamping um, and reshaping some of your um, artistic um, developments, please feel free to join us again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, up next, I would like to um, invite Monica Kinsey uh, with Arts Ward, who's going to be talking about a new uh, COVID-19 vaccine education in mobilization initiative. Um, Monica, do you need me to, to screen share? Yeah, okay, give me one yes, second. Yes, please. Okay. Mine's not cooperating for some reason. <laughs> no problem, no problem. But again, Sh Shadrina, I've been fighting Zoom all year too. It's still, I still don't have it. <laughs> okay. And let me know when you need me to scroll down. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about an a initiative that we have going on that I'm fortunate to represent arts field and our arts community in. Uh, it is a campaign for vaccine education and mobilization that we are working with numerous organizations in the community, numerous local churches, um, the Hamilton County Health Department, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Community Foundation of Greater Chattanooga, uh, Hamilton County Schools, um, the homeless agencies, we have a lot of organizations that are working on this campaign. And fortunately, we are, um, we're invited to integrate the arts. So if you will go ahead and move to the next screen. Thank you, next slide. Um, here are a list of some of the uh, art collaborations that we have going. Um, we're really kicking it off this month. We have had two vaccine events thus far that we've been able to integrate the arts where we have had Arts 120, we had Soundcore, um, we also had a local food truck come by, and this last one was at Mary Walker Towers. Um, we're going to do some PSAs um, with our local arts community to talk about, um, it's really about education and encouragement um, so that we can get back to a new sense of normalcy and also to encourage people um, to do their own educational research, but to help direct them um, to where they can find those resources as well. Um, we have six subgroups that we are targeting. We are targeting the uh, African-American community, the Latinx community, homeless and reentry, uh, disabled community, pediatric K through 12, as well as a senior community. So we have different six different targeted subgroups that we will be commissioning artists to help create targeted messaging through the arts, but also to attend some of the vaccine events. Um, as you know, uh, or you may be aware that each of these subgroups um, have you know, various barriers that we're trying to overcome and some may have hesitation. So having the arts at these actual vaccine events has made a tremendous difference, not only for um, the recipients of the vaccine, but also for the medical teams that are there. Um, I can say myself as in attending these events when I go um, to get the artists set up and get everyone organized, the complete vibe of the whole uh, vaccine event changes. It goes from a, um, more clinical type event where there's some tension and some nerves, anxiety, um, some hesitation still to a cel celebratory event. 
it becomes it eases the tensions it eases any um anxieties that folks may have and honestly pe people have started singing and dancing we've done adult coloring afterwards because you know when you get a vaccine you have to wait 15 to 30 minutes afterwards so again there's some folks who don't want to wait because they're nervous um and uh but we've encouraged them to do some adult coloring and some different art activities and thus far it's worked out really well um we are very appreciative that we are the arts are included and um, we really want to show what the arts can do and show how they heal. I know everyone on this call knows that they're healing, but um, you also know that there's a lot of folks out there who don't fully understand how the arts can be helpful. So we're there, we're here to deploy the arts and to really integrate them more. Um, we have had, uh, we are, you may have seen our call for art that went out yesterday in the arts field email address or email newsletter, I'm sorry. Um, saying that we are looking for existing art that was created during COVID that expresses, uh, you know, emotion and personal experience during the pandemic that we would like to use. We are going to, uh, we're having a vaccine jingle created from different genres um, and also some skits. Currently I have the Chattanooga Boys Choir uh, looking into doing a jingle. We also have the Theater Center working to do a skit. Um, Rise Chattanooga is also working on some uh, jingles and skits as well, and we would love to recruit any other additional artists that want to get involved, whether it's visual art, it's performance art, or, um, you know, uh, just, you know, showing that I'm being a part of the events. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Here are a few of the next vaccine events, if you're interested in participating or receiving your vaccine as well. And then uh, there'll be more announced as they come in. I will say, you know, this is still a process. Um, and so some of the information on the vaccine events is coming. And sometimes there's a short notice because it is varying on who is doing the vaccines, like which um, medical team is doing it, what hours, where location, they all vary. Um, but as more information comes in, we are sharing that out. If you'll go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, and this is the last slide. This is the call for art that went out yesterday. Um, that we're seeking currently for to use on billboards and bus wraps and also for any kind of posters and graphics that we send out. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email and phone number are on there and I'd love to work with you. Let's see. This is all, let's see, Mark. Uh, yes, we are trying to also as the new mark as the um, different CDC uh, suggestions come out, we are definitely trying to address those and educate folks as it is constantly moving and changing as you all know, because this is a learning curve, but right now everyone suggests that even after va after vaccinated that if you're around anyone who does not have the has not been fully vaccinated and that fully vaccinated is two shots currently with Moderna and Pfizer and fully vaccinated is two weeks after your last shot, your second shot. So just because you get the, the injection that day does not mean you're bionic and therefore, you know, um, you do need to wait, but they do suggest that you still wear masks. So we do this, the shot is not the only safety measure that you still need to take. You still need to do the hand sanitary, sanitary, so I cannot talk today, I'm sorry. Uh, all the sanitary measures like wearing a mask and using hand sanitizer and so on, those, those efforts still need to continue for us to get out of this. Yes, of course. Uh, Shannon, if you'll put your email in, in, in the box. Perfect. I will email it to you today. Monica, do you want to put your contact in the chat box as well? So people sure can will. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. I'm sorry if I rushed that. Anyone feel free to call me or email me with any questions. Well, thank you, Monica, um, for sharing that information and I will also um, send the um, slides that Monica shared with us in the follow-up. Um, I would like to thank you for extend a thank you to all of our guests who joined us um, this morning and to everyone that's here um, absorbing this uh, great information and if there's anyone who would like to make any um, special announcements about any upcoming programs um, or um, uh, events that they're working on, um, I'm opening it up um, for anyone to hop on and share.
All right, well, I guess everyone is still planning um, and putting things together. Um, so I um, want to thank you one more time for joining us this morning and um, be on the lookout for the follow up email and this uh, recording as usual always goes on our YouTube page. Um, if you're not already on our Artswire newsletter, please be sure <clears throat> to visit artsbuild.com and sign up. Uh, that's where we also post all of this information um, weekly on Thursdays. Um, and <clears throat> I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I look forward to seeing you guys next month. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.